Hey YouTube, it's been a while since I posted a video. I get a new vehicle and post a video of it and then kind of forget about the channel. And I did this too, I got it over a year ago and it was all factory and I've done a lot of modifications to it and this is the first video I've done of it. I've had a four door 2000 model, a two door 96 and now I've got another four door 98 model. It's technically a GMC Jimmy. It's a blazer with different badges and I don't even have the badges anymore. But built the bumpers in the rear, the front, 44s front and rear, lockers front and rear. Um, way too much money in it probably and some 44s, but I didn't want to go full widths and I haven't had any bad luck out of these 44s. Uh, cut all the IFS out of it. Could have done a better job, but uh, form over function. There's the guys with a lot nicer rigs out there than me, but... This definitely gets the job done. 14 inch travel shocks, and all this is is a factory F250 shock, rear shock, uh, factory F250 shock tower. Welded in where it bolts in on the F250 and welded on top, bottom, and the sides. Worn lockout hubs. They uh, These metal ones do good. I had plastic ones, and I, I managed to break them as well. On the front, like I said, Dana 44, the front's out of a Grand Wagoneer. Took it down to the bare house and sandblasted it, painted it. New bearings, new seals, new brakes, new everything, ball joints. Uh, one ton steering from Rough Stuff. Comes with the DOM, you cut it to length, weld everything up. And the, ball, the tie rod ends are factory GM tie rod ends. So you break one. Go to the parts store and get it, no problem. Built the cross member up front, four inch tubing, some angle iron and some bracing. And the reason I braced it is because I came down hard on rock and it bent to the point where I braced it. So the brace wasn't there, it'd been a lot more a lot more carnage. Uh, a note on that steering, you want to have those shafts about as parallel as you can. If you if it's angled down, it'll be pushing down on the steering. You want it to be pushing fairly straight across. For your best steering, you get the most range and the, the least amount of stress on the system. That's a Blue Torch Fab differential cover. They're out of Birmingham, Alabama. And that is a kryptonite cover. Weld it yourself. 60 bucks when I bought it. Uh, it's, I had one on my green one, on my green two-door. And I've, I'm rough on them and they do well. So if you can weld yourself, I recommend that. Because 60 bucks is a pretty good price for a heavy duty differential cover the pitman arm is a factory g uh cherokee uh, xj pitman arm that is a astro van steering box the pitman arm on a s10 is 100 degrees 180 degrees out so move the actual four inches forward and had to have the pitman arm come out that way three inch grand wagoneer lift springs from rough country i called them directly and got it out of a kit got a little bit pro better of a price uh chevy shackles out of a like a k10 the front drive shaft is a tj drive shaft so uh like you can see kind of going and also with the steering box they're all factory gm parts or factory jeep parts or factory parts that it's easily to find in a parts store the the box is out of a 3500 OBS, I believe the year is 89 to 99 Chevy 3500. And the line pressure at idle is impressive. And the line pressure, the maximum line pressure is more than the, well the minimum line pressure is more than the maximum of the S10. So I mean a lot more line pressure. And because I've got a Yukon mini spool, uh, the factory power steering pump didn't really like that spool so this turns the tires a heck of a lot better and you can see i've got it plugged off right there it's built set up for hydro boost and that's the next mod to do and with hydro boost i'm going to get a astro van hydro boost it's a factory part once again it bolts in and if it breaks i can go to the parts store and get one hydro boost just breaks better and uh i bought a 4bt so once it's a diesel you know you need hydro boost there's no vacuum i'm not running a vacuum pump there's people that do 
but hydro boost will solve most of that uh this transfer case is out of a first gen it's a manual shift it came with a 233 uh which is the electric shift i'm not a big fan of the only thing i had to do with this and everything bolts in speed sensor everything works is the output yoke on the front you unbolt that and slide a this is a xj yoke and it's the same spline count you slide it on then you're able to use these jeep shafts they bolt in right here and you get this constant velocity joint the double carrying that seems just a, just a little bit of slack right there i don't know the video's picking it up but just a little bit of slack in that slip yoke uh, the cross members custom, I say custom, it's modified stock, built, it, the factory one comes right here where the shaft would be, or shaft is, so built this, braced it on each side, came down, put a brace right here, and then I cut all this out, so I built the way it needed to go before I cut it out, and it bolted right in, no problems. Um, if you know anything about S10s, you know that four doors only came with automatics. Well, this one's got an MV3500. So that's another thing that I like about this. Steel braided line. Uh, so manual transmission, manual transfer case. And once I get the 4BT in here, which is a, for those of you that don't know, that's a four cylinder Cummins. Uh, it's a four cylinder 12 valve, basically. It's an eight valve. And it's mechanical. There, it takes one wire to shut it off, and really, you don't even need that one wire. You need a wire to the starter. It cranks up. You can pull a lever. You can run a lever into the cab, which is what I'm going to do to uh, actuate the uh, the pump on the on the front of the motor. So to shut the engine off, you just push a lever, and it shuts off. So there's there's no wires once it's running. A wire to the starter is all you need. I believe that's everything on the front the bumper it's it's a, like i said form over function it don't have the greatest lines but i've hit many trees with that and it does well the rear is an azuzu rodeo dana 44 and the four cylinders which is what this one came out of normally i believe most always i know this one is is geared 456 so it's a matching rear without me having to set up a new set of gears factory f250 shocks here 14 inches of travel the the rear is 58 inch bourbon leafs with three pack three leafs out of each pack they flex really good so that's why the not a lot of up travel and a good amount of down travel these are the same shackles i run on every blazer 17 dollars like 17.99 for models on uh three options here i ran them here the rear bumper which is the what i brag about a lot tire carrier does really great matching spare wheel matching spare tire big horn or max's big horn uh eleven hundred dollars mounted balance out the door for 35s is not bad and the rear bumper i got as high as possible and as close to the, the hatch as possible just to have a good departure angle modified which on blazers you know the hatch actually goes the hatch is about an inch and a half two inches past this body line right here so i came in and cut that off welded that back solid and brought this bumper up as high as possible the front is got a yukon mini spool the rear has got an aussie locker and that's the second one of those i've ran and i highly recommend those and some people are leery about the mini spool up front it does well and uh, if you ever have a problem with it turning, which I don't know, don't now, especially with that 3,500 pump. But with the lockouts, that's the only reason I did full spool. If I didn't have lockouts, I would have stayed open or, or spent more money on a, a better locker. But you can unlock the driver's side, and it's still a little harder to steer than an open differential. But it does great, and you have true three-wheel drive. And if you really, really need that four-wheel drive, you just hop out and lock that hub in. So... I like the mini spool. I like the Aussie. Uh, if I keep driving it on the street, I probably am going to buy a set of Ox lockers. Just because open differential, even with the Aussie locker where it ratchets and lets go, open differential is just easier on the street. That's all there is to it. 
but once I get the 4BT in here, I'll have a diesel four-door S10 with a five-speed with a manual shift transfer case. Uh, the ox lockers, if I go with that route, are manual lockers. I mean, there's really not much to go wrong with it, and that's kind of the, the thing to think about when you're off-roading is limit your capabilities of failure. So, uh, four-link front and rear is in the very immediate future. The, the coming swap and the four-link front and rear and coilovers will happen probably all about the same time. It'll probably be down all next summer. I do most of my riding during the winter, but it's a good setup. I really like it. It does really good off-road. Uh, the true four-wheel drive, man, is, is just amazing. It's it's funny what you can do when it doesn't matter. You, if you had one tire touching the ground, you're moving. And that I piss a lot of Jeeps off. Jeeps are great, but people get Jeeps and don't do nothing to them but put a set of mud tires on it, and it's under-geared and open differential, and they think they should go everywhere. And I come in with a s10 blazer and outdo a lot of people i outdo samurais toyotas and jeeps and they're uh those sammies are bad toyotas are bad and there's some bad jeeps but uh they just don't put their money where they should i've got one light bar i ride with a bunch of people that got about 17 light bars and no lockers so their, their priorities aren't exactly there i'm gonna do more videos of this post some more videos on youtube and uh try to keep y'all updated i i keep my instagram and facebook updated pretty well regularly so if you wanted to get on instagram and follow me it's sscfab that's sscfab uh, there's lots of videos of this and a bunch of other stuff i mess with and uh i reckon that's about it i appreciate y'all watching the video and i try to post more i am sorry that i did this at night time but I got scrolled on YouTube and realized it had been so long that I just needed to go ahead and put a video on here. Thanks for watching, you guys.